Hey guys, Pat here from Brain Country. Today I'm going to uh, work on some of these little hillbilly piles I got around here and hopefully build something useful out of them. Well, back behind me is a uh, cattle panel fence. So we had, had this uh, back here behind us to grow squash and beans and pumpkin and different things on and it seemed to work pretty good. But today I want to go ahead and make a partial raised bed in here because we also grow potatoes. We grow onions, potatoes, uh, different things in here. And so I thought by building this up a little bit with the extra soil that we have around here, we've been putting chicken uh, droppings and horse manure and different things like that in here and trying to build up the soil. I have some old 4x4s left over from a fence that uh, I redone here a few years back and I'll show you that here in one of our future videos as I got to finish, finish that project as well. But to clean up the yard a little bit, I'm trying to make use of some of the uh, old 4x4 posts that I had milled on, on my old uh, band mill that I used to own. So that fence lasted quite a few years. I've rebuilt that with 6x6 uh, six six pressure treated and set that in concrete. So some of that material is pretty rotten, especially where the ground contact was within six or eight inches of the ground. Uh, some of the posts were rotten and some of them were side posts and whatnot. So uh, I'm going to go through here and take out bits of where the good, po good wood is and start to box in the raised beds here that the uh, trellis works is going to work over or it's going to actually span well we also may enclose this and I still have some ideas to partially enclose this so on days like today where it's really not s terribly sunny out it's kind of cool um, if we can drape plastic over it to keep it warm or warm it up. Um, I want to maybe work on a, a rolling system. I'm kind of engineering on the fly here so I got a whole bunch of scattered ideas. Um, but to have this as a versatile application to where we can either have it as a greenhouse or have it open like it is but still have the still have the trellis works or the cattle panels uh, bridge the whole garden so there could be a, a climber area for the beans, the squash, pumpkin and what have you. I'll let you know what I've done so far. Right now um, in between rainstorms, this has been a few weeks here in the, in the going but we've had about three days that it hasn't rained so the ground here is actually, you could actually work it a little bit. A few weeks back, I leveled out this first portion here and put a level across here, got this perfectly level. And then from this corner, this way and square, I put another four by four post down to find out where my level was. And so we got that level. Now today I'm working around the other side and I'm doing a little bit of hand work now and finishing out this level here. I just got this, this uh, post here. It's all perfectly level and uh, so I'll just kind of take you through some, some of the steps that I'm running through here is in between scratching my head and weather conditions and see if we can't, uh, uh, we had one person ask about uh, doing raised beds and this is one way to do it as you can see the corner of this post here isn't going clear to the end and the next post in here is going to lock in here kind of like a log cabin and all this will tie together what one guy can what a guy can do is he could drill down through here with an auger into the center here and put a piece of rebar I don't have any rebar with me and I don't plan on buying any, but uh, I'm just working off of materials that I have laying around here, trying to clean up some of the messes that I have, some of the hillbilly piles, Mama calls them. 
and uh, I'm sure everybody out there that does this kind of work knows what a hillbilly pile is so <laughs> anyway I'll just kind of keep, uh, keep you posted as to what what's going on with this journey as I as I get this thing built here Now there's probably some of you out there, if not most of you out there, kind of wondering, well, how come he's not using pressure treated lumber here? Well, um, I thought about that, but we don't want to spend any more money than we have to on this project. And this will last for, you know, several years, but uh, the way I pin it together, it's not going to come apart, but uh, we'll get more life out of these 4x4s if I do what I'm doing here now. Right here is going to where my doorway is going to be. I put this straight piece in here. This was uh, one here I got to take out. I just used it to get my square for that back piece over there and get level for that back piece so the whole foundation of this thing is going to be uh, level and square. So uh, right here I've got a position here in the center of the uh, stancher that I'm going to make a doorway or an opening so in the event that we do close this in like a greenhouse we'll we'll have an access door to get in and out so right here I've got a 36 inch opening uh, right in the center of the structure and that's what I'm doing right now is laying that out I'll go ahead and remove this uh, 4x4 I'll dig my holes for some posts and uh, with the indentation where this 4x4 was now I'll, I'll know where the old I'll know where everything is a straight and true on this so I can get my posts in the right position and it can be square with the front of the uh, structure Okay, the one thing I wanted to mention to you guys, if you're doing this by yourself, um, so I had I had uh, set the 4x4, the long continuous straight 4x4, all along this uh, edge here. And as you can see, there's a defined edge right there where the old 4x4 used to be. And so I have that right in line with the new post. Oh, by the way, I did tell you I was uh, doing this all out of scraps and stuff I had around the yard. But this is, I have two pressure treated uh, 4x4s uh, left over from uh, another little job there I just did here not too long ago in the garden and such. And uh, I went ahead and used these as the posts that we bury. If I ever change out the foundation boards, then I could just go ahead and leave this vertical back in. We just had one of our ladies uh, give birth to an egg. Anyway, that's what the noise is about, obviously. So anyway, back to back to this. So I set these two posts here right in the center of where the structure is going to be at 36 inches. And in order to obviously in order to dig this post hole, I had to remove the old stake and I leave the this stake over here in place so I know how far off of the stake to measure my 36 inch dimension to the inside of the 4x4 to make that uh, inside of that corner of the door. So the 36 inch door will be right in the middle of the structure. Okay, so now that I have this measurement, I went ahead and dug the hole and I set the post and the post I have to tamp it in and 
right now it is square and plumb so when I get that set in place then I can use this post to measure over 36 inches okay remove this stake here dig my hole and then I can use the definition or the imprinting of the old 4x4 along here so where I know where the front edge of the structure is going to be so I have measurements and references to go off of all the time uh, in order to make this come out true and square obviously I started with that post over there or that uh, foundation board I leveled it I squared it to the chicken house or the chicken building uh, corner to corner out this way and then I got my straight edge developed right along that edge is straight and level and then off of that corner I went back that way um, east and west of course that's that's north so east and west board I got set and down and it's all plumb and level I come back across here set that plumb and level and this is plumb level and square uh, in relationship to that corner and the hen house or the chicken run so anyway uh, if you guys are wanting to lay out a structure like this just uh, you know define your corner uh, your corner stone when it comes to the Bible they always started with a corner stone and they squared off of that um, in order to verify square uh, what I could do is I can take a measurement from this corner and measure over to the opposite corner on the other side where the foundation corner is over here take a measurement there then I could take a measurement from this corner and go all the way across in the X pattern and measure to the corner on the other side those measurements should be exactly the same and that would give you that would verify a perfect square um, I have a mound of dirt here so that is a little bit difficult so what I did is I have a, a large uh, a large square it's not a carpenter square it's uh, a sheetrock square and I, I referenced everything to the chicken house so everything is square in reference to the chicken house um, and then I used the carpenter square which is not as accurate as using this cross cross uh, cross measurement method but uh, I think it's going to be pretty doggone square when I get finished okay have all the pieces cut out in place and now what I need to do is disassemble down to the first layer and just put fasteners in it now there's a couple of different ways a guy can do this and we could uh, basically toenail in from the ends and go in this away but I'm going to hide the screws I'm gonna put screws in here the guy could put rebar you know auger down here and put rebar in and that's probably one of the better things to do but just to get this frame together I have the two inch uh, or actually four inch deck screws that I'll be go ahead and use for this um, I, I have them have them on hand so I'm gonna go ahead and use those but I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble all this down to the bottom layer and then I'm gonna go ahead and start toenailing from the top down into into the uh, so I can get all these pieces put together foundation 4x4s fastened together. So I got this post marked off here and I got, got it to where I'm going to cut this square. I need to use a speed square to go ahead and get my line marked level all the way across, level and square all the way around the board. 
There's a couple of different ways to to cut those off, or how I cut them off. There's probably some fancy fangled way of doing it, but I'm not sure about what it is. Well, number one's a skill saw, and the other one's this little jig here that I made, and uh, it's just this is just made out of one by two or whatever it is, six inch carriage bolts, and just wing nuts on the backside. Of Quick, tight, quickly tighten it down. These are 3 16 Typically, like I say, I don't use this thing very much, but it's one of those good tools to have on hand in the event that uh, you don't have electricity. Now, after I get done with this one here, I'm going to get set up here with the skill saw and do the rest of them. So I just line up the line with the jig. And that's where the saw is going to travel. Okay, so this just acts as a guide for my saw to run along. Of course, this wood's going to get eat up a little bit with the saw, but this will ensure me a straight cut. Okay, here's the jig uh, up close. So my saw is going to travel along this line here, and this will help to guide the saw in. As on a straight cut so we'll get set up here and start working at it well that was probably one of the poorest examples of uh, sawing off a post I've ever seen <laughs> uh, the top of the post was uh, pretty just right at the edge of not being able to hold a kerf you know I didn't have any wood standing up above this so the wood just kept breaking away and causing my saw to lift up that's my excuse but anyway uh, the guide actually worked real well in helping me to achieve that flat top on there like I was looking for Here's the preferred way of cutting those off. A little quicker, using the solar to charge the batteries, and uh, it's a lot faster and easier to cut than that crosscut saw. Now you can see I made this cut right here. Now I'll put, I'll put the blade into the cut coming around and just keep following this around. Okay, what I've done now is I've strung a line across the top of the first post. I always want to start from the start from the original post and go from there across over to the other post. And I got this little level here that I hang right in the center of the string, and that gets me clear over to here on this side. And now I know where to mark this post to be cut off. Now from here I can just use a level and go across to the next post to find out exactly where to cut that off. of checking to make sure that that is level and one is the little line level that I have installed up there and then obviously the one that uh, the four foot level I went from post to post uh, they both show to be true so I'm gonna go ahead and mark around the perimeter of this one here with the uh, line socket line Okay, now I'm ready to put the top on there and then I'll put the cross member uh, across there for the center support. I'm in the shop now and I'm going to cut the two top pieces for the front and the back of the greenhouse for the ridge cap support. 
uh, these will go over top of the doorway. So I found a couple of more, a couple more uh, four by fours. These are roughs on, and I got them in my little pile of wood that I, well, one of the piles of wood that I have outside. Uh, pressure washed it off, uh, cleaned it up. Uh, this is part of an old growth uh, cedar, and it it's a pretty sound piece of wood. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cut up. Okay, now I have it cut to length, so it's it'll match the both edges of the vertical door posts and the back is going to have a I plan on putting a, maybe a window in the back at some point if we decide to turn that into a greenhouse so uh, I'm just kind of getting prepared for that just in case we do but right now I'm just going to make some little notches to where it fits over top of the uh, current door posts that I'm going to have install or that I'm going to install there the front door posts are three and a half inches and this is actually a um, full sawn four inch piece I have the dado blade here set up to the right height that's three and a half inches off of the fence or off of the table and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here and cut that uh, oh it'd be a rabbit joint I guess <laughs> center this is gonna board's gonna sit like this this will set on the it just this will set on the post top right here and so now I have the board flipped over I want to find center 21 and a half verify that by flipping this around 21 and a half now my ridge my ridge cap is going to be two and a quarter inches. It's just rough sawn cedar, uh, basically two by six. And so I want to go from the center out. I want to measure out, because it's two and a quarter. So I want to go out uh, one and an eighth on each side of the line. So we got two and a quarter inches. And then what that'll do is I'm going to cut in a little half inch notch in here. So the ridge cap can just center itself right over top of the right over top of this uh, beam here. Okay, let's go see if my cuts are all work out here. I have my other I have my other board drying on the deck here in the sun. Uh, this is still moist on the outside, but it's not dripping wet, so it's not going to hurt my table. So we'll go out to the uh, work site and check out the fit. And so now the ridge cap will fit right on top of this post here. I'm in the shop now, and I'm going to cut the two top. What I'm using here is some 4-inch long self-tapping deck screws. And T25 head. Forks. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think that'll support uh, that header or that beam to run across there. And so, actually, I guess you could call them headers that are running across the doorway. And so, I'm ready for my, my beam. I got that cut to 10 feet. 
and that should slide right into place. basic frame uh, out of all this reclaimed lumber I had laying around um, for mostly 4x4s except for the exception of the 2x6 up there it's 10 foot long um, I took and pressure washed that down and cleaned it up it was pretty filthy and uh, it turned out okay oh, this should last for a few years um, again just cleaning up some old lumber around here and trying to make good use of it uh, instead of throwing it out this this project didn't cost me any money yet uh, all the all the materials I had on hand I hope you enjoyed this video uh, take care and God bless mm -hmm.